thank you and thank you for the invitation and the introduction. Um, I'm Achim Audrid from Adva Optical Networking. We are a vendor of optical and Ethernet devices and in this talk I will talk about uh, software-defined network control, uh, a new uh, network management and control paradigm for transport networks focusing on... Is there a laser pointer? Ah, focusing on the disaggregated optical transport networks. And I see that this talk is maybe a little bit different. We go now towards more the, the lower networking layers, layer one, layer two. So uh, I will explain the different um, topics in the talk. This is the agenda, the, the structure. I will first talk a little bit about transport network, uh, transport SDN architectures, then optical network disaggregation. Um, I focus and discuss a little bit the different data models there are in order to uh, to uh, specify and then to configure and uh, control disaggregated optical transport networks. And finally, I give a few highlights and views from ongoing SDN interoperability events, field trials and uh, latest info from some research projects. So first of all, what is software-defined networking? What are we talking about? And this is a general um, emerging network architecture. Emerging is, it started already several years ago, where the network control is to be decoupled from forwarding, directly programmable, logically centralized, and it's ab uh, abstracted for applications and network services, and therefore based on open and standardized APIs. This definition is from the Open Networking Foundation, the standardization body or group that um, took on its banner to uh, standardize uh, the activities around SDN. Um, and the, the architecture on the right-hand side is that at the lowest layer, you have the infrastructure layer with the devices. These may be routers, switches, or optical uh, wavelength switches devices, uh, talking via southbound interfaces to the control layer. The southbound interface protocol is either used on OpenFlow, which is nowadays only used for packet networks anymore, for um, um, transport network gear, um, NetConf Young, and is right now the most prominent uh, protocol which most uh, vendors are supporting. Um, and this protocol may also be vendor specific, like old SNMP implementations or any CLI implementation. So it, this southbound interface could also be vendor specific. The control layer has network services platforms uh, abstraction and is communicating with a open and standardized northbound interface towards different applications. For transport network, carriers networks, optical uh, long haul or, or metro networks, the uh, Open Networking Foundation defined a few um, use cases ranging from service management in order to do an automatic service creation covering layer three, uh, layer zero to layer three networks. So from the optical, OTN networks, Ethernet and IP. Um, the elastic bandwidth provisioning is uh, we are very far from that in the optical layer, but for uh, Ethernet, um, uh, this this bandwidth uh, breathing of the of the bandwidth pipes. Um, that can be uh, configured or seen as a use case. Data center interconnect, in order to have the transport network more agile, have service provisioning in the network, um, is one use case. And then the next one have this transport network as a service uh, in order to integrate it with different um, other networking frameworks. The two most prominent use cases for the optical network is multi-layer network management, where you have a light path, you may have an, a TDM switched ODU path or an Ethernet path, and all these three systems typically are different boxes from different vendors, and you would like to have one network management system which is able to configure all the boxes in order to have an end-to-end -end service over these different technologies. And uh, the same with the multi-vendor support. Typically, you have vendor-distinct domains in a transport network operator. These domains can be either based on, on the area in the network. An access network domain has one vendor. A core metro network domain has another vendor. It can also be for 
um, dual vendor strategies that you have at the same time two core network vendors in your network, and those are separated in network domains. But you will still have a single control uh, layer in order to control this, and um, uh, currently this has to be done by very complex, very expensive umbrella management systems, and the idea here is to have this using standardized open source interfaces and protocols. So how does the architecture look like? Again, we have in the lowest infrastructure layer the network elements, uh, the devices with the IP routers, Ethernet switches, and Rodems, reco reconfigurable optical air drop multiplexes. Um, the domains, I already mentioned them, you have the different technologies, you may have different vendors for the IP layer, for the optical layer, and you have the network domains. Um, in the control, you have typically a hierarchy of domain controllers. Uh, a domain controller is responsible for one domain subtended to a multi-domain controller, which can then be integrated into a cloud orchestrator, taking into consideration also compute resources or storage resources in an end-to-end -end design. Um, so the, the main points here is the hierarchy um, of the controllers with open a APIs and standardized models. That model is defined by the ONF, the Open Networking Foundation. Um, there's also in the IETF an activity, um, which is the ACTN, um, Abstraction and Control of Traffic Engineered Networks. This is based on all the works from, uh, from the GMPLS standardization in order to have a distributed network control, uh, bringing it also into a centralized approach so that you have all this um, instead of having all these distributed protocols, you now have a centralized configuration and control. Again, it is very similar to the ONF. You have, in this case, well, your own terminology, of course. Physical network controller is the same as the, uh, as the in-domain controllers in the ONF. They talk to a multi-domain service coordinator. Uh, this can also be... Uh, talking horizontally to other multi-domain service coordinators, and then they talk to a customer network controller. And downwards, you have all the southbound interfaces, OpenFlow, uh, path computation element protocol, uh, BGP or proprietary protocols. And using this architecture, here again is the goal to go between multiple domains, also between multiple technologies from the IP layer, for example, to the optic layer, in order to have an end-to-end -end light path. There is um, the, a lot of activity in the ITF, of course. Um, the ITF model is more straightforward if you have an IP over optical network and you're very much focused on the IP protocol mode of operation, then um, the, um, this can be seen because it is. it uses the terminology, it uses a lot of the uh, the, the specifications from the GMPLS, so it's rather straightforward to introduce this into your product. So that was uh, the ITF models were the first models being introduced in uh, also in our optical devices. Um, but now most of the interoperability events from the big vendors are focusing on the uh, ONF model, uh, which is what I will explain in the in the third part. But before. Just looking at the time. Um, some views about optical network disaggregation. This is a second big trend next to, um, to the SDN control. And what is optical network disaggregation? A few years ago, there were already first introduction of alien wavelengths. Last year, there was a talk from Gasline about uh, alien wavelength transport um, of uh, services terminated. Oh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, before, <laughs> sorry, um, as not everyone knows about optical network devices, how these devices are set up for the terminology. So we, we talk about transponders, uh, in this case coherent transponders. Um, they take uh, gray interfaces towards the switches and routers and have a, a long distance coherent uh, colored WDM interface towards the optical network. 
Then they go into a filter with 80 or 96 uh, channels, uh, have a booster and preamp amplifiers. Then they go to the optical fiber network. Every 80 kilometer or so, you have to have an inline amplifier, which is boosting the optical signal due to attenuation. Um, so you have then these ELAS uh, inline amplifiers. Um, if you have a mesh network, not only point-to-point -point connectivity, but real meshed connectivity, you need to have a reconfigurable optical add drop multiplexers, which has again these uh, the amplifiers at the at the ingress and egress. And this, uh, what is here, simply drawn as a as a kind of a cross connect. In fact, is built up from several different modules, which are cabled via fibers um, in a modular structure. And you have, again, here, you can have local add drop, or you go to the other outgoing directions. So this is just for terminology. Now, for the disaggregation, instead of having one big closed system, God box, um, all the devices are uh, have their distinct uh, functionality for the different layers and technologies in the optical layers, in the circuit layer, packet layer, and they talk about open APIs in a current, in a, in a common uh, infrastructure. Now, still the optic layer traditionally is operated end-to-end -end from a single vendor from the transponder to the end of the transponder, maybe on a line, a point-to-point -point connectivity or mesh connectivity, and now we add the SDN APIs, uh, the SDN APIs here on top, which gives you the opportunity to have an end-to-end -end service setup over this network. But this network is still one system from one vendor. And the alien wavelength system now uses has the possibility to transport um, uh, signals from one vendor over the network of a different vendor. And there is one approach which goes into more detail. The fully disaggregated mode now looks at all the different devices, transponders, filters, inline amplifiers. They can come from any different vendors. They are specified and they have their own APIs and are controlled individually. And there are a few um, APIs or, or models uh, propagate, um, distributed and discussed. Um, which are focusing on this model. This goes even that far that the individual degrees, the outgoing lines uh, of a rodem, are individually configured with their own APIs. The intermediate term is based on the alien wavelength concept. So you have the transponder as one device from one vendor with a direct API, and the open line system, so the, the analog photonic system, distributed system, has is operated um, with its own end-to-end -end API. You can have full visibility and monitoring, but you are not configuring individual power levels of EDFAs, of inline amplifiers, but you can set up an end-to-end -end service across the network, and all the, the inline um, activities are done by the system itself. There's a good reason for this alien wavelength or partially disaggregated network, and this is uh, also based on the uh, technology generations. So the transponders typically have a l shorter lifetime than the optic line system. Uh, typically, transponder generations are every three to five years. You have the next line speed, you have the next better energy efficiency of the transponders. So the, 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 uh, the lifetime is much shorter than the lifetime of a fiber network with all the amplifiers which are distributed or nationwide. So here you have 10 years, 20 years of depreciation, depreciation time, and the transponders are much faster. So even from this point, financially, from the, uh, from the logistics of um, purchasing, this uh, disaggregated model where you have the transponders makes sense. Um, there have been several, um, from the operators, some visions on how they would like to uh, to build their network in future. Uh, here on this slide you see uh, four different um, uh, views and what they presented about their network views from Google in a talk. Google is also 
as with Microsoft, they see that the optical network should be configured as a whole. They support the, the notion of a domain management system and domain controller and controlling then the transponders and integrating this into an automated network control environment. Microsoft is very much pushing for the open line system, again with a line system network management system, which is controlling this end to end. And then you have either transponders in a pizza box uh, uh, setup, or you have uh, colored interfaces in the layer two or three switches, so routers, attached to this open line system. There's a nice uh, paper from Mark Feiler at the Journal of Optical Communication Networks uh, already in 2016. So this was the vision, the idea. Um, Facebook and AT&T, they propagate this fully disaggregated model where you have an API and a specification of down to the, to the EDFA, down to all the different devices. Uh, and AT&T also have the specification, MSA, multi-source agreements, on these technical specifications, on RODEMs, on EDFAs, with all their parameters, together with the, um, the data models in order to configure this. So these two, uh, in the upper line and in the lower line, upper line is more the partially disaggregated model, Facebook and AT&T more the fully disaggregated model as the vision. For these visions, um, the standardization bodies and also the industry alliances developed the data models. Um, the ITF, that was kind of uh, very early and uh, very straightforward for all the IP over optical network operators. Um, so this was, in our case, the first step. Um, the ONF with the transport ATI matured over time and is now uh, very prominent because also ITUT, MEF and OIF are also all propagating this transport API. Um, in the transport API, you have different network services, uh, topology dissemination, connectivity service, path computation. You can specify a virtual network and you can um, subscribe to notifications for alarmings. Thank you. Um, and in addition to these standardization bodies, you have industry alliances. I already mentioned Google and AT&T. Facebook, they are kind of uh, separate because they do not specify in their own models. They want to, to uh, find an agreement and find uh, models which are coming from the others and use this in an integrated way and to see how you can work with them. So, as time is running uh, short, slowly, um, a bit faster, I already mentioned the transport API with the different services. Here you see one view of the controller, which has the network information context from the directly attached devices and from subtended subdomain controllers. And then it has, can use the same transport API towards the northbound application. So you can use it in a hierarchical uh, manner. All these data models are uh, published in the open domain and developed in a, um, in a community. Um, so in the ONF transport API, the, the data models are specified in, uh, in UML and generated out of the UML. There's a young specification being generated and you can use uh, code generators in order to um, uh, generate from these young data models, your code stops for the client and the server. What you have to do still is to do the backend logic from the, the server of this API in order to interconnect it with your uh, device. And there's, um, even though it's very deeply specified, there's a lot of inter interpretation area. So everyone who even says they are 100% uh, implemented all the latest APIs, still they may not interwork. So the interoperability events are the most important thing in order to get people together and to test out their APIs and their code generations in order to use the same semantics for these um, uh, terminology and for these data. That is the open, uh, the transport API. There's currently a lot of development going on to add here a photonic media model for the optical network. 
Uh, the other two models briefly, open config. Um, I, I think this, the, the link is on the next slide. It's also in GitHub. You can get all the models uh, for the different terminal devices. Um, so they have this alien wavelength model of the terminal device running over an open line system um, with the optical transport parameters. Um, driven by operators, there's no, um, no vendor, a direct member. Uh, vendors can participate, but the, the, the core of the driving membership is from operators. Um, OpenConfig, from what we see, is quite prominent in the layer 2 in Ethernet switches and uh, specification of IP routing protocols. Uh, for the optical transport, um, it is not seen as fully sufficient on its own. So there are some deficiencies in the uh, OpenConfig where you cannot set the modulation format or the, the forward error correction scheme that is being used. All that is possible with OpenConfig, but it has to be a vendor-specific augmentation. And then you end up with eight different vendor-specific augmentations, and again, you lose the interoperability. So um, we are not a, a fan. When we do SDN, we want to have interoperability, so every vendor should use the same model. Um, with OpenRodem, they go one step further, and they really define everything in detail with their uh, multi-source agreement. Um, specifications for all the different network elements, uh, detailed technical specification, and then they have the data models um, in the open rodem, so they are cons constantly updating it. The last one was updated October 5 this year, um, so two, yeah, roughly two months ago with release 4. Um, they are so close also to the technology that for each technology uh, advance, they have to update the model. The first two models were not uh, suitable for FlexGrid data models, so they had to be updated. But now uh, it seems that the open, con uh, open road model is more comprehensive than the open config. So the challenges are five minutes left. Yeah, the challenges are that you have many heterogeneous network elements. Rodems have different levels of flexibility. And especially in cost-sensitive network areas, metro networks, uh, data center interconnect, uh, the less flexible devices are in. So we think data models have to be abstract from the technology in order to allow technology advances. And people should agree on a, f a small set of data models. And this is what's being done in interop events. So currently, the ONF has a big um, uh, working group, Open Disaggregated Transport Network, which is now in the phase two, uh, looking at uh, mesh rodem. And here you see that they look either at the direct connection to all the devices, like EDFAs, or to have this subtended, um, subtended SDN control below and the um, direct configuration of transponders and terminals. Um, all these models can be extended to multi-domain um, transport of signals. In this case, you have two domains which are interconnected by gray optics. So these domains are optically terminated, and you have at the end the transponder pairs of, of the vendors with an integrated multi-hierarchical domain. Um, this was taken one step further in one recent multi-vendor SDN trial, in this case with two vendors, Corint and uh, Adfa. And here the rodems were back-to-back -back optically interconnected at the line side. So you could transport an, a light path from vendor A over domain of vendor A, transparently optical into domain of vendor B, in this case Adfa, terminating at the same transponder as it started. So the transponder pairs had still to be from the same vendor, but you could cross transparently different domains. Uh, you see that this is uh, more suited to uh, regional network domains, but this was uh, done over fiber deployed in the Stockholm area, so real fiber, again with the domain control into an open source SDN controller, open daylight, with a network planning application running as a microservice in the Open Daylight system, uh, which was able to do an interdomain uh, 
path planning, path calculation of the optical layer. We think that this is uh, going in the right way. We used ONF Transport API 2.0 with physical media extensions. Uh, so the OTSI layer was specified in order to allow optical performance planning and the optical performance parameters were disseminated through the domain controllers to this multi-domain SDN control. That was successfully live demonstrated at several events at ECOG this year at the SDN NMS World Congress um, and uh, gives kind of a nice view where we can go with these uh, SDN interoperability. And looking into the future, this is uh, the final slide kind of that this is again uh, uh, from, a, from a Metro Hall research project. We have the optical domain, uh, the blue one, uh, the green is the transponder, which has an agent, their own models to configure transponder, in this case OpenConfig. We use a, a transport API to configure the optical, uh, the open line system, integrated again in a other open source SDN controller, ONOS. And here then we attach or connect uh, edge data centers, metro data centers, and this is then in a whole uh, orchestration environment integrated into um, yeah, OpenStack and uh, NFV uh, open source Manu. So, summarizing uh, Transport SDN and NV orchestration, there are already commercial solutions available and being deployed. Um, there are successful interop demos for partially disaggregated networks supporting distributed data centers and edge clouds. And there are ongoing research activities in order to have the interoperability, in order to go ahead with uh, optical transparent uh, domain interconnection. There's an ongoing standardization effort required, um, especially to harmonize all these different young models. A lot of, or all of these activities are being done in the uh, open source domain, so all of these data models are in GitHub publicly available. And um, yeah, so we also see that partial aggregation in the open line system with per device data monitoring and the visibility into the network allows um, a good visibility and uh, simplifies operation of the network. We have shown that this is a working approach. We are doing interops. We are doing first steps, uh, tests with, uh, with customers, with uh, vendors, uh, sorry, with network operators. We would like to slim down the high number of different data models at, as it uh, really um, is hard on the testing and delays the implementation. Um, so having a common model where everyone agrees to, uh, ideally I think this will be a combination of the different industry alliances and standardization bodies that we right now have. We also are a little bit critical about the full disaggregation um, as the, the individual configuration of the individual network elements in an optical network is very complex, error prone, and uh, we propose that you have a network service which allows you to configure an end-to-end -end service through the optical layer. Thank you very much.